Hi everybody, welcome back. So let's continue our talk about conservation of mass. Now, in a lot of those last equations, we had to talk about mass flow rates. And if we have a mass flow rate, typically it's going through a pipe like this. Now, it might not give you the mass flow rate though. It would more often than not give you a velocity and an area because I can use that to find my mass flow rate. Or in some cases, it might give me the volume, I need the volume flow rate. And so I'll still just need the velocity and the area. And you can see that your mass flow rate is simply your volume flow rate times the density. Now one thing we don't talk about all that much in this class, because it's kind of outside the realm of this course, that you will see it in more like aerodynamics courses or fluid mechanics courses, is that the velocity we're actually talking about for a mass flow rate, um, well, when we're doing our calculations, it's the average velocity. Because in a pipe or in any real flow, there's going to be some profile of velocities. However, if we're trying to get the idea of what the mass flow rate is doing, we can just take the average of those and make it easier on ourselves. So for any problem, if it doesn't say there's some sort of velocity profile, you're just assuming that the velocity it gives you is your average velocity. Now, if it did give you a velocity profile, you would have to calculate it to use these equations in their simple forms. And so that's not too bad. It's just an integral. You would integrate it with respect to area or height or whatever else you can be using as your metric. Um, and you take your velocity at each point as you integrate upward. You can do that numerically. If you got a nice little equation, you can do it analytically. It's not going to be too terribly bad. Now, what we'll be dealing with most of the time is what are steady flow processes. So for a steady flow process, the big thing here is that the mass of my control volume is constant. I would say it's like a closed system, and it is in that regard, but um, the reason it's different than a closed system is because mass is flowing in and mass is flowing out. It's just that the mass flowing in and mass flowing out is always the same amount. And because of that, the amount of mass you have in your control volume, even though that mass, like, you know, the individual mass particles that you had are changing, um, they are, the set amount of mass is still the same. So here's an example of this. You see, I have two inlets in this case, one and two. I've got two kilograms per second going in one, three kilograms per second going the other, and what I have coming out of it is five kilograms per second. So I'm always adding five kilograms per second, and I'm subtracting five kilograms per second. And with that, I'm going to have a steady flow process. This also makes things a lot easier for us when doing our calculations because like conservation of mass just turns into this really simple equation. I just have to figure out how much mass flow is going in one place and another, and I can figure out how much is going to be going out of it. If I have a single stream, it makes it even simpler, where I can simply connect my density, my velocity, and my area together to figure out what it is. And in many cases, your density will be constant, so you just have like a volume flow rate that's not changing. If you're wondering why we only have one inlet and one outlet, honestly, we run into that a whole bunch. Nozzles, diffusers, turbines, compressors, things you see in jet engines. Why do I keep on bringing up jet engines? Ah, because aerospace engineering is awesome. And pumps, that's not really aerospace engineering, um, usually involve a single stream. They have one inlet, they have one outlet. They don't want multiple inlets or outlets because that's just overcomplicating things. You will have some special cases where you do have a turbine with multiple outlets, um, but that's outside the realm of this course. And like I said, if the flow is incompressible and your density is constant, then you're simply saying that your volume flow rate in is equal to your volume flow rate out. However, there is no such thing as conservation of volume. That is not one of our laws, okay? So don't get confused about that. That's just a simplification of our conservation mass if it's incompressible. Okay, that's it for this time. Next time we're going to jump into a problem, so be ready for it. I'll see you all in a bit. Bye-bye.